I want to welcome Agile XRM to the podcast. I've known the people at Agile XRM for the past 12 years. I've seen how their business process management tool can add massive value to complex organizational processes in sectors such as finance and government. If you have complex processes or a need for dialogues on the Power Platform or Dynamics 365, take a look at how this BPM tool can add value. You can find them at agilexrm.com or check out the show notes for more details. Welcome to the MVP Show. My intention is that you listen to the stories of these MVP guests and are inspired to become an MVP and bring value to the world through your skills. If you have not checked it out already, I do a YouTube series called How to Become an MVP. The link is in the show notes. With that, let's get on with the show. Today's guest is from Germany. He works at ENBW as a low-code enabler. He was first awarded as MVP in 2023, this year. He's a Microsoft Power Platform enthusiast and a YouTuber. Uh, You want to check out his links to his bio, social media, YouTube, etc. We'll have him in the show notes for this episode. Welcome to the show, Robin. Hi, thanks for having me. Good to have you on. Um, What part of Germany are you from? Southern Germany, uh, around Stuttgart, you probably may know it in uh, Sindelfing is the town. That's where all the nice Mercedes cars are, are built, the uh, E-Class and S-Class. And I'm the only one uh, in this town who isn't into cars, I think, and who isn't working for Mercedes. <laughs> I had a nephew that lived in Stuttgart, so very close. Um, yeah, so so familiar with the area. Um Tell me, what do you do when you're not working? When you're not doing stuff on the Power Platform or your day job, what what do you typically do for food, fun, and family? Well, uh, family, I have a two-year-old son and a seven-year-old daughter, so (laughs) that is lots of of time I spend uh, with them. And yeah, that's cool. Um, And uh, of course, I have some, some hobbies, uh, recently, uh, Luise Frese, you probably know her. She she made me run again, so uh, I'm betting with her um, who runs more consistently. Uh, I love uh, mountain biking. I love the mountains. Uh, as you know, Stuttgart very close to to the Alps, uh, and that's cool. Just one and a half, two hours drive, um, and you're in the Alps. And I love the feeling when when the mountains rise in front of me. Yeah, really like that. And really looking forward to to hiking this summer with my with my colleagues again. I love it. I love it. Tell me, how did you? How did your technology career start? Well, it's uh, an atypical IT career, but uh, probably uh, lots of MVPs actually followed this career. So, not traditional IT background. I uh, studied mechanical engineering in in Stuttgart, and I wanted to do something with renewable energies, and had a lot of simulation of uh, hydro turbines. Um, finally started uh, getting an engineering position at ENBW around 10 years ago, um, calculating the natural gas networks in and around Stuttgart. And yeah, one thing led to the other. There was an access database like 10 years ago. I had no idea how access worked. And um, the person who built it left the company. So typical situation and yeah i was the one who who picked it up and yeah looked into it did more and more with it and always thought there has to be a a better way than microsoft access and was looking for a cloud tool and then five years ago we uh, transferred to microsoft uh, 365 and yeah there was power apps looked into it and yeah never let it go since since then so interesting because, you know, my job, I see so many customers that still use access databases. And one of the biggest questions we get is how hard or how easy is it to migrate from from that to the power platform, right? To to put that data model inside Dataverse and to, you know, power apps to the, the forms piece, getting power automating, of course, all of a sudden it becomes a full collaboration tool, right, which you didn't have in access when when you're working, uh, you know, with folks that ask you that question around access to power platform migration, what what's your typical response? <laughs> well, I'm not a consultant, but uh, 
the classical response. It depends. Uh, people build so many logic into these access databases. So um, bringing the data model into Dataverse is uh, one hour normally. Uh, yeah, so it, it really quickly. But um, yeah, building all the logic can be from uh, very quick because you can throw it away because you don't need it anymore or there are better ways to, to do it in Dataverse to... Uh, things that are practically impossible with uh, with the normal power platform and you need you would need other tools but i'm actually right uh, in the middle of such a project with uh, with a former colleague yeah and i think yeah it's that case where we are throwing lots of logic away and we found easier ways to do it so uh, but this uh, as you said, I'm an enabler, so I'm trying to make him build the whole thing. So it takes a little longer, but uh, I hope uh, the reward will be even bigger because they have more than one access database. And I hope he uh, tackles the second one alone. I like it. I like it. So have you found any limitations? So, so you know, you had VBA, uh, VBA right, would have, uh, would have been used for logic in um, access. Is that right? Yeah. And and so we obviously can't bring that into the power platform. And then the other thing, a few field types, right, are, are a bit different to what you can represent and access as opposed to what you can do um, in Dataverse. Yeah, but no real limitations there, but the, the major change, I'm coming more from a Canvas apps angle uh, normally, um, but doing lots of Dataverse model-driven apps as well, converging those two together. And yeah, so I'm, building more logic in PowerFX for the last five years. And the, the biggest difference was there's no real uh, possibility to um, to loop through or to, to make a normal while loop in, in uh, PowerFX. So that was kind of strange, but uh, got used to it and found my ways around it. Have you requested it? Have you requested that the product team, is that kind of a use case that potentially they could look at and, and implement, or or is it not on their radar? Uh, I think it's on their radar. I, I, I've seen it up there. Um, well, my hopes are not that high that uh, the actual ideas get into the product unless it's on their roadmap anyways. Um, but yeah. <laughs> For the few cases where I really need a loop where it's processed sequentially, um, I yeah, built a workaround. That was one of my first YouTube videos because I discovered how to do it in um, a very impractical way, but sometimes you really, really need it. And yeah, I found it out and then I thought I have to share this with the world because so many people requested it already. I like it. I like it. I took a look at your YouTube channel. Is every, as in you're obviously targeting at the German audience, is everything in German or do you do any in English? Uh, it's uh, half, half. Um, I was doing a lot of uh, beginner videos in, in German, but um then when I think I have something special that is more niche topic, uh, but is for broader audience, then I do it in English. Like I have lots of SVG content and it's really niche, uh, special. And yeah, there's not much of that content uh, anywhere on YouTube. So I do those in, in English. It's good. I think it's really important that you do <clears throat> content in your native language, right? Because English is generally well served globally. And I always like to see in individual countries and cultures it done in their own language so people can pick it up a lot faster rather than having to do that translation in their mind from English back to their, you know, their native language. So I think um, I think it's awesome that you're doing it, those videos in German because there, there would be a big market opportunity, particularly with SAP sitting in Germany, you know, as its head office. We're seeing these days many, many SAP customers now adopting the Power Platform, right, and really extending what they can do on that SAP data set into the Power Platform. So good work, good work. Yeah, that was actually my angle because uh, I started with Canvas apps like probably everyone else with Shen Yang videos. And uh, I had many colleagues who didn't follow him because, um, yeah, because there was a language barrier, especially in German. Um, not everybody uh, is comfortable comfortable in watching English uh, tutorial videos or reading English blogs. So um, that was my angle, starting with, with YouTube, really, and yeah, doing lots of beginner stuff in in German. Yeah, so good. In the Canvas app front, um, 
Are you using any design tools to to create your user interfaces? Um, like Figma, not, Adobe uh, XD, uh, anything like that? I work a lot with uh, UX designers in my company and I get a lot of Figma files. But um, when I'm wireframing, I usually directly do it uh, inside of Canvas apps because I'm just so much faster and then you can build some logic like uh, going through uh, through the screens. And yeah, that's that's just nice to So you can show someone, share the app with, with someone. It's so much nicer than the Figma file. Yeah, nice. Uh, do you see any... Where are the gaps in 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 the Power Platform that you would like to? If you know, if you if you got to control the roadmap, what would you be putting in the roadmap um, for the Power Platform? Yeah, I'm um, yeah I'm big Canvas apps guy, so I'm really eager to see where the modern controls are heading because that's a major upgrade and it will include some some form of theming i've uh, wrote a longer linkedin post uh, just a few days ago about uh, their roadmap and how i hope that it will be good and yeah finally give us theming options we were desperately missing for the last uh, six years since it existed and yeah and then better um, and even more converging model driven apps and and canvas apps so Give us uh, better ways and more out of the box ways to um, to to combine those two. Like if you want to have a pop up Canvas app in a model driven form, you still need JavaScript code, which is yeah. I figured out how to do it. There are good tutorials, but um, I see how it is hard for for newer users to um, get that done and integrate into forms like embed them give give us a better native um, way to to do that and and stuff like that nice anything else you'd have on that roadmap actually not Uh, actually um i think it's it's heading in a a really really good uh, direction there's so much stuff there we just have to yeah figure new ways out to use it to to use it probably i i I will if if you give me five minutes to think i i will uh, think of of 10 different uh things (laughs) right now not that's a good that's a good tell me (laughs) spontaneous tell me about how you became an mvp uh yeah that just happened somehow um i when i started making youtube videos i didn't even know that mvps existed um i didn't know that uh, that was a thing um but um when i started with with power apps uh, shortly afterwards when i started getting into the community then uh, covid hit us and yeah there were no in person events so uh, pro- but probably a good thing because um, at that moment I uh, connected worldwide to people and across Germany, um, people five six hours away from me. So uh, I got to know the most of the German MVPs, uh, really really nice people who got me uh, convinced to come talk to user groups uh, and stuff like that. So. Um, yeah, but h- how did I actually become an MVP? Yeah, probably doing more and more YouTube stuff. Um, at some point, getting nominated um, by by Louise uh, earlier I talked about her, and yeah, doing doing more and more stuff, and yeah, crossing my fingers, and it worked out, and yeah, so adding something more to YouTube, like uh, speaking online, uh, speaking in live sessions, and yeah then somehow it it worked out. If you're asked to do a session to a new audience that hasn't heard you before, a speaking session, so it might be a virtual um, session or in person, what's your typical process for, one, deciding what you're going to speak on and then assembling your your talk, your presentation, that type of thing? What do you typically do? Yeah, luckily I have lots of slides that I use inside my company and I have like two go-to topics, like the um, digitalization movement inside a company and making um, makers do it. So like business makers, citizen developers uh, do it. And yeah, lots of uh, Microsoft uh, speech, like the, the app gap challenge. But I see in my company that that stuff is, is real. And that's uh, some things I like to talk about because um, 
I work a lot with, with IT department and they only see the tip of the iceberg, the stuff where it, that is already in SAP systems. But um, the last uh, or two years before I got the enabler job, I, I worked in the business. So I saw the bottom of the iceberg and that is uh, yeah, filled with access databases, Excel files, processes where you send mail from, uh, from person A to B inside the company and so on. And yeah, there's just, lots of uh, potential for digitalization uh, in each company, uh, in every company, I, I'd say. So yeah, that's the one thing I, I love to talk about. And the other thing I'm passionate about is um, uh, about UI in, in UI, UX accessibility in, in Canvas apps and that, that type of stuff. So if I'm more in the business setting, it's probably the first one. If I'm more uh, in the power app setting, it will probably be the, the second one. Excellent. You mentioned their App Gap Challenge. What's that? Yeah, the App Gap Challenge is, uh, like I said, the bottom of the iceberg where all the Excel files are, and every process has like a digital footprint, and we we need to store that data somewhere. And uh, the business users don't have uh, endless possibilities. They usually have the best possibility that they have is is Excel at the moment if they are not uh, into the Power Platform or other, or other low-code tools. But normally, um, they, they don't have that and can't use that. So, um, But we need to we need to get all these data that we store in, in Excel files um, and we need to organize that, store it in databases and, uh, yeah, build relational databases out of that. And we have so, so many Excel files in uh, every company um, that the IT personnel is not sufficient to, to tackle this problem even remotely. So this is the challenge. We have so, so many uh, digitalization projects and the workforce that natively does that is not enough. So yeah, we need to enable our citizen developers, our business people to to do that. And yeah, the challenge is that we don't have enough people and how we tackle it. Yeah, we enable more people to do it from, from the business side of things. Nice. Nice. Now you've got an interesting job title, low code enabler. What's that what's that involve? Or, you know, is is this a role we're going to see more inside businesses? Yeah, I I hope that in in every bigger business I do lots of stuff from um, doing some like lighthouse projects um, in in my company to yeah sometimes first level support for people yeah just need some help nurturing a community um, inside of a company um, and just accelerating that that process because. I will think, and Shane Young talks a lot about this, that we are only at the beginning of the process, uh, so people adapting the Power Platform, because it's only like six years old, I think. So we're really at the beginning of the process, and people will come over time, but um, my uh, responsibility is to accelerate that uh, movement and yeah, to get uh, to speed things up. And yeah, this job I just love. So how do you do it? How do, how how do you speed things up? How do you get more people involved? How do you how do you you know what are the conversations that you're having that move people from you know liking or just working with Excel or Access and and or paper based processes and you know as you say all those emails backwards and forwards that have some information in them? How do you move them to the vision of you know, using a platform, an ecosystem of tools like the Power Platform, um, rather than stay with what they know. Because people, right, inherently, no matter how bad what they know is, it's what they know. So <laughs> they're comfortable with that, right? And that's why we have, uh, you know, the need for adoption and change management and things like that. How do you, what are, what are some of the tools you use? What, what's the, how do you think about these things? Yeah, first of all, you need to find the, the right people. Um, power apps or programming power apps, developing power apps uh, or apps in general is not for everyone. And that's okay. We, we don't need everyone to participate. We need everyone as a user, but not as a maker. But um, we need the people who did those Excel processes. They, they didn't, uh, they weren't born with an Excel skill set, but they, they trained themselves um, like it's the, actually the, the same thing like like with power apps um we just need to uh, give them a push in the in the right direction so i would say it's uh, most of it is intrinsic motivation people 
normally or these kind of people love learning new stuff um they love doing something something else than their normal day job so um yeah creating things uh, that's that's just a beautiful feeling and that's what i hear over and over again people who just want to finish that app and keep working uh, until late in the night just because they they want to finish it and they're so fascinated by that i wouldn't make people do it but uh, i love that uh, i hear that story so much people um uh, sitting there late at night uh, building canvas apps or, or something like that so people people actually want to do it um, but yeah i have to show what is possible and i have to speed things up accelerate uh, things a bit um, get their bosses to give them a little more time um, to to learn new stuff and um, begin earlier like with our students we we try to teach our all our students that uh, the power platform exists and teach them the basics so yeah get a, a real grassroots movement going and then yeah create a community of of people because that's actually the best thing when they don't ask me but ask each other talk about it and yeah help help each other out and that's what we're seeing more and more so i i'd say the first people that's just um it's it's just a numbers game. We are twenty thousand people in our community. There are just people who love doing this stuff. You have to find them, uh, help them, nurture them, and grow the community. Hey, thanks for listening. I'm your host, business application MVP Mark Smith, otherwise known as the NZ Three Six Five Guy. If you like the show and want to be a supporter, check out buymeacoffee.com forward slash NZ Three Six Five Guy. Thanks again, and see you next time.